Tonight, 1,000 Uber drivers organize against Uber. The Apple site goes down over iPhone 6 orders and new tools to teach kids how to code. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 171 for Friday, September 12th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. First up, a group of about 1,000 Uber drivers, mostly SUV and black car drivers, going by the name Uber Drivers Network NYC, are attempting to organize a strike against the company over failing or falling fares and unfair working conditions. The group has planned a protest outside of the Long Island City Uber office on Monday morning after refusing to drive for the service yesterday, today, and tomorrow. One issue is that Uber has extended a summer discount into the fall, which decreases drivers' wages. The group also claims both SUV and black car drivers have been forced to accept requests for UberX at a lower rate if they are within the area and are temporarily suspended for only choosing to accept SUV or black car requests. And in other Uber growing pain news, the California Public Utilities Commission sent a letter to the company yesterday to clarify that state law prohibits what are known as charter party carriers from charging fares to individuals rather than charging a total amount to all passengers. This law applies to Uber's latest service, Uber Pool, that allows riders with similar requests to share an Uber and pay a reduced rate. Uber competitor Lyft received a similar letter from the CPUC regarding its ride splitting service Lyft Line. And in a statement to Recode argues that, quote, Lyft Line is helping to improve daily commutes and reduce traffic, ultimately contributing to carbon reduction and improved air quality in the process, end quote. Now, sounds like another fight for new regulation is on the way. Oh, goody. Apple's new iPhone 6 and 6 Plus went on sale online this morning at midnight Pacific time, uh, but not without some frustration for those in the U.S. who got up early or stayed up late to be one of the first to pre-order. Apple's online store in the U.S. was down for two hours and 25 minutes. Apple's in-store reservation system also went live this morning, but an apparent bug blocked Apple IDs with two-factor from signing in to secure an iPhone 6, meaning you had to disable the security method to reserve a phone. Given Apple's recent iCloud security troubles, this seems odd. Now, despite the hiccups, an Apple representative tells Recode that the overnight sales of the new iPhones set a record, though didn't say how many have been sold. And Apple Pay, Apple's new mobile payment initiative that the company announced on Tuesday's iPhone event, is launching in October. And, de and details about how it works are starting to emerge. The Financial Times reports that Apple will receive 15 cents out of a $100 purchase from partnering banks and financial services, a cut that Google does not receive for its rival payment service, Google Wallet. Now, Apple Pay uses a token system built into NFC that encrypts every step of the payment process, then further secures it with its own Touch ID fingerprint authorization system. The company says the program will work with more than 220,000 uh, U.S. when it launches. Speaking at an investor conference, AT&T CEO Ralph De La Vega announced that the company will embrace Wi-Fi calling in 2015 as a complement to its core service. The statement was likely in response to T-Mobile's announcement earlier this week that it would offer Wi-Fi calling. And during I Apple's iPhone event, T-Mobile was the only carrier included in a, so in a slide explaining that the new iPhone models will also support Wi-Fi calling. De La Vega call, uh, says AT&T plans to offer calls that can seamlessly hand off between the Wi-Fi network and the LTE network, though the company hasn't yet launched its voiceover LTE service. And earlier this week, we told you how Facebook appeared to be gunning for YouTube by placing more emphasis on video plays on its service. Well, today, the Wall Street Journal reports that Facebook has reached out to some of YouTube's biggest content producers and encouraged them to test distributing their videos on Facebook, citing people familiar with the matter. A source also tells the journal that Facebook and video content creators are discussing how advertising might be incorporated into these videos, and that it's likely that some sort of ad product 
will be rolled out by the end of the year. Now, coming up, how can you get your hands on one of those Atari cartridges that was buried in the New Mexico landfill? And next, I'll talk to Kyle Russell from TechCrunch about a new tool teaching kids how to code. But first, today, I want to share with you a free and secure tool. It's called Personal Capital that solves two barriers to growing your wealth. The first barrier is that it's hard to keep track of stocks, 401k, bank accounts, all that stuff, all on different sites with different usernames and passwords. And second is that you pay someone to manage it and you're probably paying too much. Personal Capital brings all your accounts and assets on one single screen on your computer, phone, or tablet with real-time and intuitive graphs. Personal Capital has an award-winning watch app that you can download in Google Play that seamlessly integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with relevant and timely updates on their finances whenever and wherever they need it. Personal Capital shows how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You also get tailored advice on optimizing your investments. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right away. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com TN2. Personal Capital is free and a smart way to grow your money. And we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining me now is Kyle Russell, writer at TechCrunch. How are you doing today, sir? Welcome to Friday. I'm doing pretty well. Uh, it's been a long week with TechCrunch Disrupt SF happening, but uh, we got through it and everyone survived. Everything's okay. You made uh, it. You almost made it to the weekend. It sounds like this is probably your last uh, requirement for the week, so I'm sorry to be the one to keep you from getting to your celebrating. But No, it's my pleasure. <laughs> having <me> on. <laughs> Absolutely. So you wrote yesterday about Code.org, their newly uh, launched curriculum aimed at teaching kids how to program called Code Studio. So first, why don't you tell us a little bit about Code.org and what their mission is? Code.org is a nonprofit organization dedicated to getting computer science and programming curriculum into schools nationwide. Uh, they're probably most well known for their Hour of Code uh, project, which you know, got people like President Obama to go you know, on YouTube and say like, hey, I spent an hour learning how to do this. Um, and because of those efforts, they've been, you know, they've just been excellent at, you know, getting their word out there. Um, through those efforts, they were able to bring in for Code Studio people like Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates to actually film segments introducing core concepts, which I thought was really cool. Um, so the point to Code Studio is that, you know, while you can say that you want to get a computer science curriculum in schools, most public school systems aren't really equipped to, you know, roll those things out. Um, so it provides uh, two ways for people to sign up. One is, you know, kids who are just interested in computer science can find this themselves and get an account set up really quickly. The other way, though, is that teachers or, you know, people who run the computer science labs or libraries at K through 12 institutions can sign up for these programs and manage uh, lesson plans for students' grades K through 12. And what's really cool about Code Studio is that this isn't just you know a set of easy to use tools. They actually thought out uh, puzzle based lesson plans for every age. So there's lessons that start out at you know age four and give you you know assets from Angry Birds or Plants vs Zombies and say like hey move your character around on the screen. While at the same time you can also have lesson plans for people who are 15, 16 and want to make actual games that they can share with their friends. And it manages to address. Uh, the learning curves and the things that each age group would be interested in building, which I think is fantastic. How, how accessible is this to both students and teachers that want to get kind of involved in this? Is it just entirely web-based, um, pretty easy to get involved with? Yep, it's all built in HTML5, so it runs on pretty much anything uh, you could want to run on it. Mm -hmm. So you know, in a school environment, whether it's Macs, old Dells, some Chromebooks, iPads, uh, student can be using any of those and access this. That's really cool. Now, um, also, I'm pivotal, pivotal on this type of thing is the cost. What, what exactly does it cost uh, for anyone wanting to get involved with this? Well, you know, as part of their nonprofit, you know, effort, they want this to be in everyone's hands. Sure. So it's absolutely free to sign up for, uh, you know, as long as you have the URL, you can get up and running in minutes mm -hmm. and right into the tutorials. It's great. 
Cool. Now, if parents are out there watching our show and they want to learn more, get this into their kids' schools, and, you know, basically kind of be the ones to facilitate this hitting the schools that their kids are in, what, what exactly can they do? Is there any action that they can take? Honestly, I think the best thing that you could do is, you know, get the URL, which is studio.code.org. You know, give that to the teacher that focuses on math or science. Reach out to librarians, the teachers that run uh, computer labs in schools. Those are the people who could get this program into kids' hands. And um, honestly, it's so easy to set up that, you know, if you, as long as you can give them that URL, they can mm -hmm. be up and running in minutes, like I said. Oh, super cool. I love it. I've got, I have a four-year-old daughter and I love to think that, you know, maybe someday she'll, she'll kind of get into the geeky side of things as her <laughs> dad has. So <laughs> who knows? Maybe my daughter will do it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Kyle. Uh, Kyle Russell, of course, is a writer at TechCrunch. Where can people follow your work online? They can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Kyle B. Russell, as you can see on the screen. Um, also, a quick Google search for Kyle Russell TechCrunch will find my author page. And uh, I don't know, bookmark it. I write some okay stuff sometimes. <laughs> we certainly think so, too. Thank you so much, Kyle. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks again for having me. All righty. And finally, after a documentary crew dug up a large collection of failed Atari games that was secretly buried in a New Mexico landfill in the 80s, a city council has unanimously ruled that the 1,300 cartridges should be sold at auction and donated to interested museums. 800 games will initially be offered on eBay in order to determine their value and generate interest. And each cartridge will ship with a, cert a certificate of authenticity and a document explaining uh, how the Atari came to be. The documentary... Uh, depicting the cartridge burial entitled Atari Game Over is being produced by Xbox and is slated for release later this fall. And I, personally, I can't wait to see it. Uh, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at uh, twit.tv slash TN2. And of course, you can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.